everyone always just thinks it thinks it in their head they're like wow this guy's really yeah, cool he's funny he's good looking but they don't want to say it because like they don't want to hurt make, your feelings or yeah. hurt other people's feelings or hurt their own feelings by vocalizing it yeah yeah and you have enough self-confidence to know that mm-hmm. even though no one in there no one in your whole life has ever complimented you right. ever right you know everyone's thinking it and that's enough for you yeah it's a it's just a self-awareness thing like if no one's saying anything about you that means they're th- always thinking about you yeah like any any time a situation happens it always has something to do with me mm-hmm. you know like if i see someone look off in the dentist in the, in dent- the dentist <laughs> into the distance look off in the dentist. if i see someone looking off to the di- into the distance at the dentist <laughs> they're probably thinking about me because i was nearby and i saw them do that so yeah naturally no but when i'm at actually at my like least mentally healthy mm-hmm. i do think that way but like in the worst way where like if I if I'm at the gym and I see someone's phone up or something or someone look at just even look at me, I immediately am thinking like, what are they thinking about me? They're judging me. They think I'm ugly or something like that. Yeah. It's funny you mentioned the gym because I wrote down in my notes something I wanted to talk about is like recently. So our gyms recently removed the mask mandate finally. Mm-hmm. So I had my first couple workouts without a mask. And I realized something that I've thought my whole life, but I never really like consciously made note of it. But it's that everyone i see at the gym i just think that they're mean like yeah i and i don't usually view people as like negative i feel like i have a pretty positive outlook on life yet every time i see anyone at the gym i just assume that they're like kind of an asshole (laughs) well it's probably because they're not smiling like you're not really no one's happy to be like benching you know Uh, i mean like okay (laughs) some people are but it's not like you get you're done you're done with your set and you're like all right and like smiling and like looking around at people no one's one's talking to other people they're all just kind of doing their own thing i know but like isn't it weird that because i'm i'm there and i think i'm like a nice person and i'm not talking to anyone so why do i assume that everyone else there is mean shouldn't i assume that they're doing the same thing i'm doing you should probably stop assuming things i know i do it too though everyone at the gym to me like if you look at me i think you're like judging me or something or yeah. i'm doing something wrong or there's something on my face <laughs> like, do you have any habits that you've noticed now that you can w- not wear a mask do you have any like mask habits that have developed um i do weird things with my mouth sometimes <laughs> yeah. like I, I notice when i if i'm breathing really hard i stick my lips out a lot because that's how i would be able to push my mask out more to get more air in yeah like yeah. so i would be like <sighs> oh you do it that way yeah sometimes okay. <laughs> sometimes yeah i do i like we'll go yeah, I do that too. Because for underbite. me, it's because my mask feels like it's riding down, especially mm-hmm. if I'm sweaty. And like as I'm going hard, I go like, because I like, it keeps my nose up or something. Yeah. And I also just, I don't think much about my face during my workout or, or just when I'm walking around in public. I don't really think about what my face looks like. But when I have it off, I'm more concerned about what my face is doing, what my mouth is doing. Like, do yeah. I have something on my face? Is there something in my teeth? Because that was something I didn't even have to worry about. Now I got to worry about things in my teeth. Yeah. Well, but do, do you ever worry about things in your teeth? <laughs> Sometimes, yeah. Like, do you, like, like before if I, you go if in If I somewhere, just eat and I start smiling. You'll check a mirror? I'm not going to, like, check a mirror, but, like, oh. there is a little suppression in my smile. Because oh. I'm, like, I don't want to give the full thing because what if there is, you know, like, just some shit stains just, all like, over. some broccoli in my teeth. Yeah. By the way, have you ever eaten that broccoli in I your gave freezer? To my, gave to my sister. <laughs> You donated it. Donated it to a good cause. Yeah, yeah to someone in need. I'm ass- I'm assuming broccoli. that she she consumed the broccoli. Oh, that's yeah. good. She was very happy. Have you hung out with her kitty more? Uh, I saw it when I dropped off the broccoli. <laughs> <laughs> she ran towards me. Okay. So you have a good relationship with this cat. Yeah. You know, she comes when I when I walk in. Yeah. She comes. Yeah. Just everywhere. <laughs> I saw a video of an elephant coming. Um, coming and it came Dude. so much like i my bet <laughs> <laughs> it was at a zoo and it was like a just a random person filming it and the, there was people huddled all around and everyone's like oh oh he's gonna do it and then like he, the male is on the back just like you know you know you can picture what an elephant, elephant style yeah but like from my understanding animals don't have sex for pleasure but that video made me think otherwise because the elephant pulled out Oh, and then came all on the ground underneath the legs of the female. But if it wasn't doing it for pleasure, why would it ever pull out? Maybe, maybe like the initial <laughs> burst. It, it was like these are the initial burst and then pulled out. Because it might, <laughs> if it was a lot, it might have just been like just like an overflowed. Just an overwhelming amount. He filled it up so much that there was like no more surface area for the cum to go. So it yeah. pushed his own dick out. Have, have you seen the movie uh, <laughs> Brothers Grimsby? 
No. <laughs> There's a scene where it's, I think it's made by uh, Sasha Baron Cohen. You guys Sasha have Baron. told me to watch that one. Yeah, bro. It's, <laughs> it's like, I don't even know what the movie is. It's just a, it's a spoof of something. And there's a scene where he's, they're inside of an elephant's vagina. And then another elephant starts having sex with this other elephant. <laughs> okay. And you can imagine what they see. Wait, how are, is this animated? No. How are they in it? It's obviously we're not actually <laughs> in one. It's just, I don't know. It's disgusting. <laughs> Great movie though. Really funny. Yeah. I mean, I'd be down. I'm horny now. Yeah, I would be too. After talking about elephants. You would be, which means we just talked about elephants, which means you are horny now. <laughs> yeah, correct. Same page. Have you had a boner while doing this podcast? I don't have any memories. Neither do I. And I I'm honest, not going to deny it, but I, I might have. I'm pretty confident that I have not had one, which is just really shocking based on the amount of time that we... <laughs> well, I don't know if it's shocking, but we've done this a lot of hours. We have. Yeah, so... Well, it, it makes me... I just don't get a lot of boners around my <laughs> friends. I'm, they're not usually what... You In know. front of the camera with the lights on around, surrounded by your friends. Yeah. That's where I get the most boners. <laughs> That's where I get my most pleasure. Every time someone walks into my house, like upstairs by my bedroom, <clears throat> there's a, a boom mic, which is like a microphone on like a long pole basically for like films and stuff. And every single time people see that and the first thing they say is they're like, what's that mic for? And I think what they think is, you know, I have this long microphone right outside my bedroom, potentially into porn. But why would you have a microphone just sitting there? If anything, it would be a camera. No, you you, you doing you only the, audio porn. You got to have high quality audio in your porn. I mean, <laughs> that's true. But <laughs> actually, I feel like the camera's more important. <laughs> that is true. Yeah, but I don't know. There's something about like if it's too. I mean, I've mentioned this before, but if it's too professional. I don't like it. That's interesting. Like if the if it's like 4K and the audio is amazing, it's I'm uninterested. So you like a blurry bad angle with yeah. horrible audio. And then the sound you just hear like <laughs> it's just like you just it hear sounds like, like the, they're drowning in a pool. Yeah, or the phone keeps like rubbing up against like the mm. comforter or something. That's awesome. That's my favorite. Wait, but back to back to animals um having sex. Yeah. It's kind of messed up that we're all just going to crowd around them and like watch them do it and pull our phones out. Like I know, like, they don't have feelings like we do and have a conscience, but if they did, just per chance, that's really fucked up. Yeah. We shouldn't be doing that. Since they don't have sex for pleasure, do you think that to an animal, should we treat sex as, like, a sacred thing the way we do for humans? Should we, like, if an animal start banging, should we, like, turn away and give them privacy? <laughs> or is it just, like, the same as watching them eat? I mean, personally, if I see it happening, I'm probably going to watch it because I've, <laughs> I've never seen it in person. Actually, I've seen it one time at the zoo. These two squirrels were just getting after it. Oh. I don't know. There were some sort of little tree things and they were in this little exhibit. So they weren't even part of the, the zoo. They were probably just squirrels that were just No, no, there. no. They were in exhibit. It was like... Not, <laughs> they put squirrels well, in Well, it wasn't squirrels. It was like these little kind of tree, little furry things. I don't know what okay. they were. Like it might lemurs? have been the things with the huge eyes and like the weird fingers. Mm, flying, you know? flying squirrels? Uh, no. Zaboomafu. <laughs> kind of like Zaboomafu. Food, a little lemur esque but smaller mm. um dude they were getting after it and one of my little cousins is like what are they doing and i saw and i was like uh i don't know let's just go to the next one <laughs> wow kyle so you lied maybe wow. telling the truth there would have helped her development as a human being and she would have learned from that but instead you took that opportunity of being a teacher mm -hmm. and you turned it into being a dictator i mean i was like 16 and she was probably like <laughs> seven. So, you know. It's a well, conversation dude, you didn't Also, one time at the zoo. I hate the zoo, first of all. The zoo's really sad. The zoo sucks. Like, the zoo, the idea of the zoo sounds fun. And then you go and you're like, this is sad. It's hot. There's a lot of walking. It smells bad. A lot of people in like wheelchairs and kids screaming. And so many strollers, too. It's like, yeah. just get out of my way. Um, But I was like, <laughs> where was I going with that? Get, get out of my way. <laughs> It's almost like I'm just picturing like a like a disabled veteran. Cal's like speed walks past him and gives him a glance. Like, come on, man, bro, pull, can, move over. He can't be in the left lane. Uh, where was I going with that? What about the zoo? Something happened. Oh yeah. Okay. So I was at, so me and my sister were babysitting my cousins one time at the zoo, and uh, we got them snow cones because we're great cousins and that's what we do. And this little girl behind us was like really sad that she didn't get a snow cone, and she was talking to her dad. She's like. Hey, like, what can I do to get a snow cone? 
and his dad her dad was like well uh these two kids up here got snow cones because they were being very nice to their parents and me and my sister looked at each other like we are the only adults here <laughs> i was probably like 17 my sister was like 20 yeah and they thought that we were the parents to our cousins mm. who were probably seven to eight so and you i didn't even how didn't old even, were you at the time i was a teenager i was like 17 <laughs> 16 17. teenage kyle in no world could pass as a no chance father <laughs> absolutely zero chance that i could have fathered a child well there's well, a chance you could have yeah i would not have looked like a father dude imagine if like you had a kid or you like you didn't have the kid you got someone <laughs> pregnant when you were like 15 let's say she had the kid when you turned 16 i don't know there's some people that are 16 that i think are like kind of mature for a 16 year old and like not that they know what they're doing but they could like figure it out but then i think of someone like me or like my friends when we were 16 and i just think based on like where we lived where we grew up i think i was like I, my point is there's a lot of 16 year olds that were more mature than me definitely yeah and so, like, my maturity having a kid, dude, I, w I still can barely hold a baby. And the thought of then, like, having to teach it things and, like, take responsibility. <laughs> yeah, but you probably care a lot more when it's, like, your baby, you know? So, yeah. I feel like you just kind of do it. Because I don't think any parent knows what they're doing. I know, but, like, I get anxiety to go to the post office. <laughs> and the <laughs> amount of anxiety I would get where it's, like, I wouldn't be able to sleep because... I would just know that there's this impending fear of the next morning that you're going to have to get up and just do it again. <laughs> and yeah. and then maybe one day the baby's going to wake up and puking. And then you don't know. I don't want to do with the baby's puking. And it's going to grow up and hate me too. <laughs> it's because I was a horrible father to this. Because I was sorry that I was 16. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how people do it. If you guys know anyone that's done that or if you guys have done it yourselves. Props to you. Props to you. That's very impressive uh, i've also been back to being a father to my cousin uh <laughs> so i've been i've been mistaken as her father at, twice now because mm -hmm. another time i was outside just throwing a ball with her and then this little girl comes outside and she's like hey uh she she goes up to my cousin she goes how many or is that your dad and she's like no that's my cousin she goes oh does your dad have any kids and i was like I i'm not her dad and no i don't have any kids and she goes huh it's weird that your dad doesn't have any kids. <laughs> <laughs> this is like, I mean, she was like three, but still, yeah. I was like, dude, come on, kid. Well, yeah, what a stupid Figure kid. Figure it out. Dumb, stupid idiot. I don't know. See, if this kid thought logically, if this child exists and she said, is that your dad? And she said, no. But then she also said, why doesn't your dad have any kids? If this girl <laughs> exists at all, it means her dad has a kid because she's that kid. Exactly. God, what a... You can't be a dad without a kid. Come on. Critical thinking skills. Yeah. Well, she doesn't have any. She's three. What, what's, <laughs> at, what, at what point do you develop critical thinking? That's actually a very good point. Okay. This actually is a perfect transition oh. because I had something I wanted to try today. It might suck. It might... <laughs> if it sucks, we just... We do it twice and then move on. But okay. I realized on my notepad on my phone, I use it for everything and I have had the same Apple ID for a very long time. And I have notes on my phone from like 2014 and on. Okay. And so I was going to just like kind of close my eyes and scroll. And then you'll tell me when to stop. And I thought we could just dive into some of my random notes on my phone and okay. try and just, sure. just get the context of my high school or college self. Okay, let's do it. Do you want to try it? Sure. I'm going to look through my notes, see if I have any older ones. I don't think I do. Uh, the, the first one ever. <laughs> see, some, okay, some of these things, I don't know why I made notes. But this one says... <laughs> Alec, Luke, and I ran 105 laps in seven hours and 35 minutes. Oh, that was the marathon. And that was <laughs> seven when hours and 35 that, minutes. That was 2012. Wow. August 8th, 2012. I made that note at 3.19 p.m., which was probably when I had just got home from that. And later, and then I got home and I remember I took a bath because I was in so much pain. And then that night, Willig texted Luke and I and he's like, hey, boys, like, do you want to go to Red Robin? It's like, yeah. Why would Will, you you'd try to go to dinner after running a marathon? Yeah, well, that's the thing is like I was up for it, <clears throat> but I didn't realize how much that would actually suck to go to a restaurant yeah. after running a marathon. <laughs> I mean, we did, but yeah. But so that was my first one. But just tell me, tell me when to stop. I'll just read some random ones. All right, stop. So this one was some video ideas that I had that I never ended up doing. Okay. So I'll go through some of them and see which one you think. Are they, maybe are, they are they good or bad? <laughs> Pretty bad. I never okay. did them. All right. Um, the first one, 
this was an idea that I saw a different YouTuber do, so it can be done. Okay. Living off of one cent per day for a week. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's a great title for a video, but I don't think there's one thing you can buy for <laughs> one penny. I think you're just you're living off nothing. Nothing. <laughs> it's just the same thing. I think the idea was like to trade things maybe and be like, hey, I have this one penny. I'll trade you this one penny for that gum wrapper and then i'll trade that gum wrap you ever heard of the guy that traded a paper clip for a house what it, th- this guy thing. did a ted talk you guys can type in how i traded a paper clip for a house it has like millions of views and this guy it was like a multiple year process but his goal was to trade a paper clip and eventually get a house so he traded a paper clip for like a I don't know, like scissors and then scissors for like a stapler or whatever. And he just went to slowly bigger and bigger things to eventually he was trading like a car or a motorcycle for a car, then a car for a boat. And Bro. then eventually he traded and got a house. <laughs> That's crazy. Like, What could you possibly trade for a house? Also, who you can't just can you, can you trade houses or like trade things. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, like maybe legally they had to do some signing away, but. Yeah, like I don't think he paid anything. That's I think it. he traded like a really fancy car okay. for a house. That's sweet. <laughs> I respect that guy. Yeah. Um, um, although, I'll be honest, I cannot picture you doing that. Well, yeah, no. I cannot picture you going around and be like, oh, hey, man, do you want to trade for this, this <laughs> pen? I have this penny. Do you want to trade? Do you have anything that you could trade? And they're just like, no. They're like, no, I don't want <laughs> I your penny. don't want your dirty penny. <laughs> and then I get really desperate because at that point, I'm probably hungry. Yeah. And I still haven't made my... How much would you need? I, I don't really know. I just thought the title sounded like good clickbait. No, definitely. I don't know how practical that would be. but Yeah, it's a great title. It's just, <laughs> it seems really hard. Um, The next one here said, read a book uh, every day for a month. <laughs> My God. I mean, I'd rather run another marathon. It's basically a mental marathon. Uh, yeah, I don't know. That's... I haven't even read a book in like four months. So <laughs> <laughs> I haven't read a book in a year. I started the book in october 2019 no, you haven't read a book in many years yeah no, many actually years. no you read no that's not other true. Yeah. living other people's lives i read one book during quarantine or like right before quarantine i think yeah um uh and that was for a video that never happened <laughs> one of these <laughs> yeah so this one stupid it says <laughs> dropping my phone on the pavement until it breaks <laughs> <laughs> I don't, like wouldn't that be kind of cool though no you wouldn't watch that i used to actually watch videos of like phone like phone breaking videos there was this guy that i used to follow <laughs> i wish his, i wish i remembered his youtube name i think it was like tech racks or something okay and i would just follow him and he would just like destroy everything the newest thing was it like a father-son duo no nah, it was just this oh. dude and he would have his camera and be like all right i'm gonna take his blowtorch to this new iphone <laughs> we'll see if it handles the blowtorch test and he's like, yeah, it's a pretty good product. And he's like, blow torches it. He's like, yeah, hell, held, held together pretty well. So good product. Yeah, it's cool. It's yeah. fun content. There's this one channel called Will It Blend? Mm. And it's, they just, every video, they just, it's like a random item. And then it will it blend. And they just put it in a blender and just turn it on and see what happens. That's, I guess, a good idea. <laughs> yeah, that those were the only remotely interesting ones. Okay, we'll go again. Tell me when to stop. Stop. Maybe you guys can, if you guys are on YouTube, I don't know what color this shirt is. I thought it was dark gray and it's starting to look green to me. It's gray. That's gray. This is gray. It's, yeah. it looks kind of green. <laughs> <laughs> like I don't. Maybe in the right. Yeah. Indoor lighting, it looks different. I think it's gray. Okay. Okay. Um, Blood type. A positive. <laughs> nice. Good job. <laughs> yeah. Uh, So this was from my angsty, like, I was really into like motivational videos for like a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I just wrote down some quotes from books or videos that stuck with me. You want to hear them? Let's hear them. Let's hear young (laughs) They're going to inspire you. All right. Probably going to piss me off. (laughs) All creative people need something to rebel against. It's what gives their lives excitement. So what did you rebel against as an angsty 16 year old? Well, this was when I was going into college and I ended up rebelling against college. I think. Did you win the war? Or did college win uh, the war? <laughs> the war is still ongoing. TBD. Yeah, we'll see. Um, I haven't failed. I've had 10,000 ideas that <laughs> didn't work. <laughs> That's so st- <laughs> It's from Benjamin Franklin, though. He's a pretty yeah. respectable guy. He ended up on a on a bill. Yeah. He also flew a kite. But do you agree with that, that, y- he n- that you never fail? You just have ideas that don't work. Um, yeah. Yeah. 
I think there's maybe better ways of saying ideas that don't work. You I think it's just I've I've uh, failed. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, maybe there. Yeah, I don't think there's no other way to put it. Yeah, he failed. It's kind of just a synonym. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> wait, but Benjamin Franklin didn't he do bad things? Maybe who invented electricity? <laughs> Thomas Edison. I don't know. He did the light. Who was the one with the kite and he, the the key? Uh, uh, Franklin was the kite guy and with the key. But was that related to Thomas Edison? I don't know what that proved. Do you get them mixed up in your head? I just know Edison made the light bulb. I don't know which one. <laughs> I don't know if someone invented electricity because I think they I discovered. Mean, someone invented. Well, like, they discovered electricity. That's true. It was always there. Yeah. Was it always there? Yes. Lightning is the electricity. It's electric. No. I, the electric yeah, slide. I know that, but uh, but like Who the discovered le- that. <laughs> <laughs> the electricity that we use nowadays. Yeah. Like, that's not, like, lightning that we just put in a bottle and, like, stored it to use. Like, that's a different thing. <laughs> yeah, it is. So, someone... <laughs> you, just, you catch the lightning, and the, it's, like, it's you use a bunch of, um... What are those little bugs? Lightning bugs. Fireflies? Yeah, there's just a, there are a bunch of them. Oh, they really? Just, they take the juice from the um, light bulb, and then when they When I turn it them the off, bulb. what do they do? Where do they go? Well, no, they're not in there. They just suck the juice out, and they inject it into your light bulbs. Suck the juice out of lightning? Out of the... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, how do they transport it to the lights? Well, they use a kite, like ben, like Franklin did, oh. and then it travels down. And then do they, they use the kite? Is it the most practical route, or is it more just to kind of pay homage to his to their ancestors? Yeah, Benjamin it's just a, it's a ceremonial thing. <laughs> it's they could do it a lot easier. It's just for it's just for Benny Frank. Yeah, yeah. Cool. So, anyways, what about were you asking about electricity? Is it invented? Yeah, did electricity always exist, or did someone like? create it well i think it has always been able to exist because it's things that have to work together to become electric like complete the circuit so yeah it was discovered i guess yeah okay that was good science rules here's a good one this is i don't know what this is from it says be the louis armstrong of whatever you are passionate about (laughs) and i think louis armstrong was like a blind Nah, uh, you're, musician. You're thinking of <laughs> you're thinking of Stevie Wonder. Louis Armstrong was a uh, no. I think he was it, a trumpet guy, right? Wasn't he blind too? I don't think he was blind. I, I just think just a classic. I just think he was a good with the the saxophone or the trumpet or whatever he played. Yeah. So just you know, whatever you want to do, try and be just like Louis Armstrong. Like why specifically him though? <laughs> is it was easy that good? I just find it interesting that you picked Louis Armstrong over anyone not because you're not even a louis armstrong you don't even know who he no, was th- th- that wasn't my brain that came up with that i heard that somewhere yeah but you heard that and then not even knowing <laughs> thinking he was a blind trumpeter or something i mean i knew he was a musician like i know the name and it, i i thought just thought he was blind all right what am i <laughs> what are you gonna do <laughs> it's just like to me to write a quote in your notes it's got to be pretty meaningful to you and this clearly must must not have been that meaningful if you don't know who who it was <laughs> I don't know, but that's what I'm saying. I knew generally who it was. Like, if someone tells me, um, you know, you're like the you're like the Wayne Gretzky of podcasting, thank I'd, you. I'd be like, God damn, thank you. Like that's but I don't But I know who Wayne Gretzky <laughs> is and I know how good he was. I know he plays hockey, just like I know this guy is a musician, and that's about it. Okay. You know? All right. <laughs> okay. Um <laughs> Do you have any, like, reminders or anything? Things you need to remember? Well, one of them I just saw says, do full mohawk on podcast. (laughs) So maybe one of these days. You know how... So Kyle has this photo with, like, our buddy Connor and Luke, I think, where you guys painted your faces. Yeah, yeah. And went to a basketball game. We should just, like... We should plan to go to, like, a UW basketball game or something, but just our pregame is, like, a podcast before. So we, we do the face paint, the mohawk, do a podcast, and then go to the game. I'll, I'll do that when the Mariners go to a playoff game. you do a will... mohawk? <laughs> sure. I don't Yes. <laughs> will you paint your face? Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd rather paint my face. But I, I guess I can do a mohawk, both. too. Sure. <laughs> Why not? Okay. This is off topic. I just have a question for you. Okay. Um, as a videographer, do you agree that when you see a camera guy, like a dude with a camera, yeah, and he's like doing, you know, there's just a certain look to a videographer, you know? Okay. Do I Th- have that look? <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. Like if you're when, when you're with your camera, you, like you're coordinated with your camera. You know what I mean? Like yeah, there's like, just people you can tell, like like they know what they're they doing. know what they're doing. Yeah. I feel like videographers have to have big biceps. Whoa, or else, or, or else, I don't feel like you're a good videographer because you you struggle to hold the camera. 
Did, you know what I'm saying? Like, have you know? Like, did you see a guy in particular, and you were like, "Well, yeah." So, like, I worked uh, where I work at. They were doing a video of the gym. So, <laughs> I'm actually in the video. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, it was like me dude. looking at my computer. It was really stupid. Um, but basically, this dude had pretty big arms, and I was like, "I I feel like you're a good vide- videographer right off the bat." And I was like, "What makes me think that this guy's a good videographer?" And I was like, "It's probably his arms, because mm. you got to be able to hold the camera, and like you don't want to have tiny little arms trying to hold a camera up. It would be hard. You can't keep it steady. So I feel like I trust you more because you probably have a steadier hand, mm. like a like a heart surgeon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't think I have particularly steady hands, but yeah, I. I think generally videographers have to be kind of fit. Yeah, because you don't see any with skinny arms. Yeah, no, I mean, most of the shit that you're carrying around is like heavy gear. And when you use one of the, like the gimbals, like a Ronin that's what thing, he was, that's what he was using. They're so, I, it depends on like the newer ones are like one handed and lighter and stuff. But the old one, the one that I have, that thing's fucking heavy. And it's, it's not just, it's not that it's that heavy, but it's more like, imagine like picking up a weight at the gym that's like not that heavy but then you have to like with that weight you're not just lifting it you're like you feel like carefully like maneuvering where you're moving the weight and it's just like so much tension and i just remember by the the end of days like shoot days or whatever when i was filming all day i'd get so dehydrated and just so tired from like carrying all this shit and yeah so i would agree i think that that's kind of a thing that they have is like relatively fit arms i guess what do you think that they also wear long shirts they love videographers love the, you also I, I do always that. do it. that's such a videographer move to wear a long shirt with your camera just like a plain black or a plain white long shirt yeah i think <laughs> there's so- something to the the flowiness i i think it's because when i saw videos of like i guess hip-hop growing up because i like rap music not that I love baggy stuff, but just stuff that like flows like, mm-hmm. and I think it looks cool in a video. If someone's hoodie is like, they move and the hoodie moves a lot with them yeah. or like they're running and you see just things dangling, it, it like adds something to the video, you know? Interesting. I've never really thought about that. Whereas if you're wearing skinny jeans and like a t-shirt, there's not as much movement there. Yeah. But you're behind the camera though. Yeah. So it's just, it just is like, I want to, it's just like a. I think it looks cool. You know, it's just weird. Like I literally, the the guy walked in, I could tell without even him holding a camera, I knew he was a videographer. Yeah. I could just tell like, yeah, it's just, it's a certain look. Yeah. That's weird. I've never known that, but, uh, what do you think is something I'm trying to think of like another person, another type of job where you see someone and they, they like look a particular way. Uh, well I can tell, I mean, I, I, at a gym I used to work at, there was, it was a, like a private club. So there's a lot of wealthier people that would go there. And I could tell if you're a real estate agent. Really? Yeah. There, <laughs> it's a certain look. It's a certain look and they act a certain way. Um, I feel like real estate agents don't have beards usually. Uh, that- they, or they would be like the very buzz down beard. Um, yeah. And they always have perfect hair, fresh haircuts, very nice watches, nice clothes. It's just certain, like I just, I could tell like you're a real estate agent. That's what you yeah. do. <laughs> yeah. You never see a real estate agent with like long hair and like, yeah, it's very clean, scruffy cut. facial hair. Very clean cut. One more thing about the gym before we move on is like I said, I've been working out without a mask now finally. And, uh, the moist locker room feel is, has finally made a return because for the longest time all the showers were shut down oh you you shower at the gym well n- i not really but i just meant they're open now for people to shower there but i realized as i was walking through it today the moist locker room feeling is one of my least favorite feelings or just like environments to be in not locker rooms themselves it's the the moisture and sweatiness that comes along with a locker room yeah. Because as soon as I walked in, I felt like I was back in middle school. Oh, yeah. Because I just remember post PE locker room. Oh, where, it smelled so bad. And it's but it's like it's not just the smell though. It's like something in the air. <laughs> you know it is. It's it's musk in the yeah. air. <laughs> just men. Yeah. Just dirty men. I thought about what if every like thing that came out of our body was visible in the air. So like if you burped, you saw. Like that, maybe burp particles were like red, and fart particles were brown. Dude, have you seen? Have you seen the uh, thermal 
what like a fart looks like in thermal goggles no. bro that shit goes everywhere that's why i know that there's like poop particles in the air because yeah. you watch a fart in thermal and that shit is like all it'll expand same with Through the pants or is this if you're like spreading your cheeks both. to the wind both um. i mean i feel like if you caught a breeze it'd probably take off but um well it's like also the diagram of when they were saying how you should wear a mask or whatever they show the person the people talking like as far away as you and i are and it shows where all the particles and all their shit's going and they're just like spitting all over each other yeah it's like we're just covered in each We've other's shared saliva. more saliva than i have with like significant others in the past At, <laughs> honestly <laughs> probably at this point if one of us is sick the other one is sick yeah um but anyway uh something i wanted to give a little update on is the superhero challenge oh yeah i was gonna ask you about that i have now finished the mcu when we're recording this i just post like watched and posted the video for the the most up-to-date mcu movie which is spider-man far from home but yesterday the second to last one is a, was avengers endgame yeah and i cried i can't believe that <laughs> it like that that actually really blew my mind because i i know that john doesn't love watching these movies and he's doing it because it's like a fun challenge or whatever i know that you don't like these movies but then yeah. for you to actually cry watching <laughs> these this movie in particular made me realize like wow maybe it actually is just an just undeniably great movie and yeah maybe i should watch it i know and and a lot of or some people were commenting like oh like he's just he's just saying he liked it so much because he got a bunch of shit for the the previous one infinity war which i thought it was fine but i didn't think it was like anything insane but like well one i just don't like to do that i don't like to I will say definitely like some of the ratings on these movies. I definitely am a bit generous just mainly for content sake, you know, like I gave, I gave Endgame a 10 out of 10 mm -hmm. in reality. Nothing's a 10 out of 10. I mean, there are a couple movies that I've watched that are like 10 out of 10, like they're oh, perfect. I can find a flaw. <laughs> Easy. But like, I don't know. People have been commenting saying like, uh, Oh, so like you must love. It seems like you love these superhero movies now, or you're like a big MCU fan now. And like, I still respond with like, not really. <laughs> like, I, I enjoyed the movie a lot. I felt emotionally connected. I cried, but like, if I never have to watch it again, I would kind of be cool with that. So I'm in a weird spot where like, they hit me, and I I appreciated it and can respect it. But at the same time, it's like. I still did like don't need to watch those ever again, you know? So you like actually cried. Yeah, like what, you what? commented thinking you're like, what did you say? Something about John used teardrops? Yeah, it was like, I thought I mean I, I figured you actually cried too. I gotta obviously I believed you cried, but like <laughs> what why? <laughs> That's the I, I don't know. I mean it was Well like what was the specific part where where a tear I mean there fell was a couple parts that were tear worthy. One cried of, multiple times. Yeah, yeah. Holy shit. <laughs> cried too. I cried and then it gives you like 15 minutes to kind of like recover and then they hit you with another one and I cried again. But is this people dying? Yeah, yeah. There's people dying and uh Oh, people dying is always sad. And just like witnessing like the the families of the people die who died, mm. like that's kind of the main sad part. Was it more sad just as a death or as of the person that died? Like, were no. you more sad? It's like, no, Tony Stark. Because I know no. Tony Stark dies. But. Yeah. I don't really... Get, yeah, by the way, spoilers, but... Uh, if I you haven't seen it by now, though. Like, yeah. I, I mean, know. I don't really give a fuck. I don't know. Like, the characters are cool, and I get why people love them, but I mainly cry because I think, like... I just relate to that of, like, oh, it's, like, this figure who died, and then the family has to deal with it. I just think of, like, oh, I know people who have died, and then... Yeah, yeah seeing how the family deals with it like i can relate to that more than oh like tony stark is such a cool person like i don't really care that much yeah you know but yeah man i don't know i just it's weird because like i try to make the videos enjoyable and fun and so obviously and like i don't know it's no fun for content if every movie i'm like it was cool but like i don't think i'll watch it and then if i just like if everything's just average to me that's not very entertaining. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I was surprised. I really liked that one. 
but at the same time, I can't wait to just not watch these. <laughs> <laughs> Would I like it? Okay, that's another thing. I don't know because you need – like if I just watch that with not seeing the previous 20 fucking yeah, movies – Yeah, you need the background. It doesn't really make sense. That's but the thing. I, He's like, I don't want to do that. I know, and I think that's <laughs> dumb. Like if, the, if you need to watch 20 fucking movies to get this new movie, that in and of itself is dumb to me. That's how they get you. <laughs> and that's how they get people to get sucked in and like – okay – this is something I just want to rant about for a second. I rant. talked about it on TikTok live and I was explaining it, but so there's this very controversial quote that you might've heard that first of all, it was taken out of context, but basically uh, Martin Scorsese, who's like, we might've talked about this quote in the past at one point, but he's a very famous movie director, very old school. Like he's pretty old now, but he basically at one point, had a quote that said like superhero movies aren't cinema and nice people like I love, I love Martin. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, that was very controversial because some people like, Oh, if this guy, the Michael Jordan of movies, like thinks that these aren't cinema, whatever, like people, some people sided with him and then other people were like, dude, you're a fucking idiot. You're an old head. Get out of Hollywood. That's like, what I was about to say old head. Yeah. And they're like, you just don't like the new shit. Cause you don't, you can't do it and all that, but that isn't really what he meant. And then he ended up posting an essay like he, Martin score says he kind of expanded in this, in this article thing that he wrote where you, you can look it up. I forget what it's called. If you type in Martin score says he essay, isn't it whatever. Scorsese Scorsese Scorsese. I don't know, I don't but know. he goes more in depth and kind of part of his stance is that he just thinks that the, the, the terminology is weird one saying like something cinema versus not because like who's to judge what like if i was to make a two-hour video of like of two-hour vlog and you put it in a movie theater is that yeah, is that cinema i don't know I don't, it's like yeah. where do you draw the line but the main thing or one thing that he touched on that i really agree with is that these huge movies that are like multi hundred million dollar movies sometimes with these big companies that are these existing franchises that they know are popular it kind of like limits the amount of original new art that can be made because these companies are investing so many resources into something that they know they'll make their money back just because the source material of comics is like a huge thing and they also probably have a formula too yeah, they're definite, and like anyone who says they're not formulaic is lying. Like they're yeah. all formulaic, they're 100%. all the same thing and very predictable. Generally speaking, there are some changes, but I don't know. His point is that these movies that come out, they're curated to be what like these companies have such good algorithms and statistics and people working on the back end. They know exactly what's going to get you to watch it. And that's why every time you go on Netflix, Hulu, HBO, there's always like a new series and it says like for you or like what you like, I don't know what the categories are mm -hmm. called, but you go on, it's like what you should watch next. And it's, it's cause these companies know that if they curate a certain type of show that's why there's so many shows like breaking bad there's like breaking bad ozark ozark mind hunter there's this new one mayor of east town they're all good they're all great but like they know that it's that these criminal shows where there's like a family drama mixed with a criminal thing yeah and there's a little love interest on the there's side a love interest like th that shit works yeah and so anyways that's all to say kind of part of his point is that these are companies that are like investing to make their good movies like they're well made but th it's like they're like making something that like they're I, f I feel like they're manipulating people into loving these okay in a way like they're gonna that doesn't sound right i think his point is that they just make so many of these superhero movies because they know they can make a ton of money from it mm -hmm. but to me what's really sad is that the movies that i think are actually impactful and like new creative art that like doing experimental things and things that people have never done before those movies get made but they don't have the funding so no one ever hears of them and no one ever watches them and that's why like 30 of my favorite movies ever made 
no one's ever fucking heard of because all the marketing goes to the next Batman movie. Yeah, so basically it's like the the more artsy movies, more, I guess, cinema movies are the ones that are like original ideas and someone trying something different. And those ones just don't get funding because they're probably harder to back because it's a just a kind of a wild idea sometimes, right? Yeah, and and he basically said like, it, it would, there was a crazy statistic that I, I don't know exactly what, but I think he said like an insane amount of the top grossing films, I think like 90% of the top grossing films in the last 10 years, 90% of them or some, some number like that were all remakes, reboots, or part of a franchise. There was only, there was only 10% that wasn't an old movie that they remade or an old animated movie that they've turned into like a live action one. It's all like Lion King remake, Jungle Book dude, remake. There's a Cruella movie now. I know. Emma Stone, it's like, dude, we ran out of all the ideas. So it's like, all right, let's just go back through a Disney and then we'll take some side characters and, and then create they a story. And redo them and pump them. And it's so stupid. I don't know. So that's more of the thing that the issue that I have with them. Like, I see why people love these movies and I always have. And like, obviously I can connect with them. But to me, it's more just like, I think it's really sad because these movies, I don't know. I just don't think that like they hit the same as like a movie where I agree. It's like when you watch a random movie, that's like a drama that you didn't really hear of. And it just like is really powerful. You're like, God damn, like that, you know, I yeah. felt something or I thought something and I don't know. And people could argue that about superhero movies, but dude, I saw the other day. Me and Jordan watched uh, Mortal Kombat. Mm -hmm. That was the like the worst acting in script I have <laughs> ever seen. Like just so bad, unbelievably yeah. horrible acting. But the but that was the, the action dope. The action was awesome, and they had awesome kill scenes because you know, like in Mortal Kombat, they have like special kills and stuff. Yeah. That shit was that stuff was cool. Other than that, though, horrible movie. Yeah, it was just. I mean, you, really, what it was is you're there for some fight scenes. Yeah, and that's another thing that people always say. They're like, you know, if you're, like, what did you expect? It's like you're the one who paid money to see this, or you're the one who went to the theater to see fucking King Kong versus Godzilla. Yeah. If you wanted some fantastic acting, like, that's on you. You know, like that's on you for expecting it to be some crazy thing. So like. When you go into a movie like Mortal Kombat, like you you know what it is, you know what you're getting yourself oh, I, into. It was exactly what I expected, but almost like even more so exactly what I expected than what I expected. You know yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Like it was exactly what I envisioned. I just like I could I couldn't believe that they just didn't put any more effort into the acting or the <laughs> script. Like it was horrible. They just yeah. And that's I don't know. So that's where I'm kind of torn because the superhero movies, like, they're obviously well made. Like, all of them are well made, and objectively, yes, they are good movies. But to me, it's just like, I don't know. I think it's a shame that a lot of movies that I think are the best movies ever that have ever been made, and I think a lot of these movies that I love, if anyone was to watch them, they would sit back afterwards and be like, damn, that was fucking amazing. Mm. And people just aren't going to watch. They're just... People aren't going to watch a movie like five times a week. They're going to watch maybe a couple times a month. And it's probably going to be the new release at the theater, which is always some big fucking reboot backed by a hundred million dollar or billion dollar company. Yeah, it it's is. Just, it kind of sucks. So it, that maybe that's like the equivalent of me appreciating a good contact hitter in sports or yes. like a pitch, or maybe a pitcher that doesn't throw hard, but he's really good at locating his stuff. I appreciate that because it's not very sexy, but like it's, it's very special. Yeah, it's like it's like a movie that it doesn't have a huge budget, but it's a great story, great storyline, very well written, gets yeah. the job done. Yeah, and it's just like I don't know. Yeah, if you see a player who's like hitting bombs and he's the new hot shit, like like Yasiel Puig that couple <laughs> yeah. that one year yeah, yeah. when he first blew up, like it's he was a great player, but it's just different. Yeah. It's just like some other thing than a player who's been consistent for seven years and won a couple world series but like he doesn't get all the glory <laughs> i don't know i agree <laughs> but um yeah so i don't know that's the update i how many more do you have to go 
like you've done you're done with Marvel, but like like now 36 what, bro <laughs> yeah so are we gonna be are we gonna be watching them with you in <laughs> in la or? i don't i mean i'm gonna try to keep it up like i'll probably watch one on the plane yeah. and then i'll watch one i don't know like maybe some night if people are drunk and go to bed early maybe i've watched one in bed or some shit like that but yeah i don't know but um that's that i just wanted to update everyone it's been pretty fun there's reviews for all those movies on my other youtube channel called hey narwhal so go sub over there but kyle uh one more thing before we hop into the segments microwaves yeah those don't make any fucking sense (laughs) what you don't understand microwaves. Microwaves make no sense. I know how they work. I can work. put my food in there. Yeah. And I can hit a button, and forty seconds later, it's scorching hot. Uh huh. You want to know I wanna how it works? Put it in the oven. I turn on the oven. Sorry, my mic is like loud as shit. I'm screaming. But if I turn on the oven, and then it has got to heat up, and then I put it in, and then it takes fucking forty five minutes. That's some stupid shit. Why don't we just turn ovens into big microwaves? Okay. Well, microwaves. Okay. I, I At one point, I definitely knew how they worked. Now I'm, you know, I'm out of school for a little while, so I've kind of forgotten. But what from what I remember, it's has to do with like there's some way it's a microwave. So there's waves that are going down and they interact with the, the water that it, like little water molecules that's on your uh, food. food and then it vibrates and that's what heats it up. But I think I, no, I, I remember I, learning that yeah, it has something to do like, with that. It's like something's vibrating because of all the waves and shit. And then that's what heats your food up quicker as opposed to like a traditional oven. Yeah. How does that heat things up differently? It's just warm and it'll warm just heat and up it eventually. Yeah, it's like putting it. It's literally just a warm area and you're warming up food. But this one is like zapping your food. So like if, it gets but soggy, like obviously soggy. you can't put your hand in a microwave when it's going that's not safe but like but if you were hypothetically to put your hand inside it as it's going does that mean the microwave itself isn't actually warm at all like the the area around your food does it not get hot i don't know i think so no because it must because when you open the door but that's all steam steam, though but that's 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 what it is i don't think the space is warm i think it's directly influencing your food yeah it's in there and then it get yeah i don't know why they get all soggy though like it doesn't it doesn't make anything crispy. It's just going to be straight up soggy. That is something that needs... Like, we have air fryers, Instapots, but we still don't have a microwave that doesn't make your shit soggy. Like, I think that's just because of it interacts with the water. I think that's why. It brings the water out or something. I yeah. Think. No, I mean, that... Yeah, I think I remember learn, vaguely learning about that, but just the concept of that is so wild to me. Yeah, so the fact that someone created that? Yeah, and just the fact that, like, we still... Because that's incredibly efficient compared to an oven. How have we not... I don't know. It just seems a big discrepancy because you can cook chicken in a microwave. Well, I'm trying to think of a meal that you could do in an oven or a microwave. No, that's the point, though. You you, you could f- cook it way faster in a microwave, but it's going to be worse quality. I know. But You're sacrificing time for efficiency. But how have we not gotten the best of both worlds yet? That's literally what an air fryer is, though. Like The air fryer is the closest thing to get an oven, and but way quicker. Because it, it heats up way quicker. You don't have to wait wait for your air fryer to heat up. You yeah. just put it in, and then it does it, like, a lot quicker. Yeah. Have you ever used an Instapot? Or no? Like a Crock-Pot? It, no, it's called an... It's a version of the... It's called an Instapot. No. Oh. They, they was what like... It? It's the air fryer, like, a year before the air fryer. It's like a... It was, it was hot shit with, like, white women for a little bit. Uh. Um, my sister has one, but... I ha- the first time I ever did it was at Willig's house. I was there for like dinner with his family one time and his sister was like, oh, I got this Instapot. She's like, dinner will be ready in like seven minutes. And they were like just starting. And I was like, what? And she's like, yeah, we got this Instapot and you can put like, you can put rice and like a raw chicken and like whatever you want. And it like will cook everything together really quickly. Like that's why it's called an Instapot. And I don't know so. exactly how it cooks it. It's different than an air fryer, but it's kind of the same idea that it just magically comes out and it's done. And yeah, awesome. I don't know how people invent things. Truthfully, I don't understand it because you have to. There's just so many things you have to factor in. Like you have to make sure it even plugs in to work, and then it has to all work together. It's like well, <laughs> oh, I think getting something to plug in and get electricity is the least of their 
concerns. It all goes back to Benjamin Franklin and Thomas Edison. Hell, man, it really way does. Way to tie this episode together, That's man. That's what I do. It's my specialty. <laughs> um, well, yeah, should we hop into the segments? Let's do it. Today, we have recommendation and, and fan, fan questions. questions. All right, Kyle, what do the people got to try out this week? All right, uh... <laughs> I picked this specifically because last time I wore this shirt, it was very wrinkly, and it actually might still be. Is it wrinkly right now? A little bit. Yeah, so fold your clothes better than I do because <laughs> all of my clothes are wrinkly. And I was actually like, the other day, I was searching through my drawer for a specific shirt because it was near the bottom, and I just was digging through all my shit, and I just realized that I nothing was no was any nothing, nothing was folded anymore. Mm. So it's all wrinkly and just a big pile of shirts in my drawer. And yeah. Don't be like me. I hate... That's what I love about dry fit material is it doesn't wrinkle. Yeah. And I just hate how there there's some material for some shirts I have where when I like take them out, they look like they were just like under a cement thing, yeah. like all crumpled up for 10 just years. Manhandled. And some of them, like I have shirts where you literally have to like... Iron. iron them every single time you can't just fold them because the, the wrinkles just don't go away and then some of them if you don't like you said if you don't fold them the right way or right away yeah or right away then they get fucking wrinkled yeah it's annoying so stupid it's just can we invent shirts that don't wrinkle uh, i think we have actually bill people say that but i feel like the shirts wrinkle yeah if i try hard enough i can make it wrinkle i can make anything wrinkle anything anything <laughs> Um, all right. Well, my recommendation is, uh, keep some fucking sunglasses in your cars, guys. <laughs> do you not do that? No, but the other day I almost got in a car crash cause I was driving to Seattle and it was pouring rain and it was right around like seven 30 or eight. And like in Seattle in the summer, it's still really bright out then. And it was the weirdest combination of events where it was a torrential downpour. Like my windshield wipers couldn't go faster yet. The sun was just like really oh. bright and the road was literally white and all the cars were going 30 miles an hour because no one could see anything and i genuinely was scared for my life because i was like <laughs> <laughs> fucking couldn't see anything and all i thought was damn i wish i i wish i had like my my sunglasses in my car and i know that kyle always does that i think most people have sunglasses in their car yeah so anyways i got back and i found an old shitty pair from a high school football game that i'm pretty sure have no uh oh like like they're it, not real sunglasses it's just a darker <laughs> lens yeah like it doesn't actually serve the purpose of blocking out at least light, it's something really. though yeah so is that your only pair of sunglasses you own yeah i dude i can't not lose sunglasses well, that's why you keep them in your car <laughs> they just disappear there's a you know how socks always go missing yeah that doesn't really happen to me it's it's like bigger items that go missing i've never basketballs really basketball. basketball pumps yeah basketball pumps um sunglasses what do i always lose i've been losing socks a lot lately i lose masks too yeah dude <laughs> masks just disappear you lost all your pin sweatshirts yeah I had four black Pims hoodies, <laughs> and they're all gone. I, ha I could understand it, one or two, but I had four. <laughs> I don't know. But, yeah. And phone chargers. Every time I go on a vacation, mm. one of my family members loses a phone charger. But I, I think it's – there's no way someone actually loses them. It has to be someone stealing them phone from chargers? my family. <laughs> yeah. You could just leave it in a hotel room. No, dude. It's deeper than that. There's a <laughs> conspiracy going on. Okay. For our family stealing shit. Yeah. But anyways, guys. Uh, all right. We got fan questions now. Uh, the first one is if someone offered you $500 to not shower or bathe at all for seven days, but you still had to go about your life. So you got to go to work. You got to do this. You got to do that. But no, you just can't clean anything for a week. Can I wash my hands? Mm, no. <laughs> wow uh five hundred dollars i would per <sighs> no i probably wouldn't depends how bad you need that I, 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 for a thousand i would yeah 500 like a little too low for me yeah like 700 i think i would okay so you're, you're close <laughs> it's it's close yeah yeah because I, I mean i don't think i have like horrible bo i mean if i went seven days i wouldn't smell good yeah <laughs> but it's at some point it's just like it's i just feel gross and it's not worth $500. It's worth 1000 for sure. Yeah. 
I know. I was thinking, yeah, I would, I'd probably do it, but I don't know because as I've gotten older, I've realized I get more, if I don't like wash my face regularly, which I never used to do in my life. But now if I don't wash my face before bed next day, I'm going to have something there. You never really get any acne though. It's no, not bad, but like even just little stuff like on my neck or like a little yeah. white head or whatever the fuck. But I don't know. Seven days though, by the end of that, I'm Dude, gonna have some so things growing on my greasy. face. Yeah, I'm have like a plant growing out of my <laughs> cheek. Yeah. Um. All right. The next one is: Would you rather spend a year in a maximum security prison? Mm-hmm. So that just normal prison life, whatever, casual, or stay in prison until you complete a Rubik's cube? <laughs> oh my god. I yeah. Can I get help from someone else in the prison? Nope. I'm not doing. It. I, I'm doing a year. You I'm not think, getting. A, I'm not you getting think out. It would take you longer than yes. a year. Yeah. To I, do a roof. I, I, yeah. I don't you think I could ever. Luck. No. Yeah. I don't think I could ever do it. I couldn't even figure it out if I actually sat down and thought what's every possible move. I don't think I could figure it out. But I mean, but if you had like, like a YouTube tutorial or like a book, you you eventually could figure it out. Yeah. You're just saying if you just had to use just your brain. Yeah. If it was just like giving me a, a Rubik's Cube and lock me in a room and say, all right, figure it out. I'm not ever going to get out of that room. <laughs> I'm, I'm serious. I don't think I would. Yeah. Because no, I think you're right. Because Rubik's Cubes, like it's not something that you can just ran. I mean, theoretically, yes, you could just randomly twist things and eventually get one right. But like generally you have to follow like a, what's a term? What's the, not an algorithm uh it's a um what's the word for that the pattern yeah there's like steps but there's like a term i don't think algorithm's the word but all the it's like a method but there's yeah, like a math yeah. word for that <laughs> i don't know <laughs> but anyway <laughs> equation you, yeah you have to like follow the rules and if you don't do that it fucks it up so if you were just there going like that i don't think you'd ever make any progress i wouldn't no i'd take the year <laughs> And yeah. I would get ruined yeah. in prison. <laughs> I, I would. You think they'd team up on you? So one do you way think or you'd another. you gravitate towards? What group would you try and, like... Dude, I, what groups are there? Isn't it just all ethnic groups? All just based on your race? You don't think that there's, like, oh, that's I don't know. kind of the nerdy guys that... I don't... There's not nerds in jail. I mean, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe not, but there's different jails. I don't know. I don't know about every jail. Yeah. You know, every prison. I learned that. So apparently for like Washington state, one of the main big prisons is up in Monroe. Yeah. And at like the, I think it's Monroe high school. Uh, yeah. They're right. Like it. it's literally, if you're in the, like the field at school or like you can just look out the window or whatever and see the prison. And like when the people are out there, like working in the yard or like the, you know, prisoners yeah. <laughs> i feel weird calling them prisoner inmates inmates, inmates. yeah <laughs> when the inmates are like out and about you literally can just see them from the high school and i just thought like how wild is that that some of these like very like high level criminals are just like right there and if imagine if there was like a prison break thing and they escape during a school day the alarms go off Dude. they're running towards the school campus to get away yeah. steal some kid's car that would suck also like if you're just running around the track imagine just getting they just yell at you probably uh-huh. like imagine you're just running around the track at pe and then they're also just like out in the yard you think doing the whatever. prison people just they just can yell, yell at strangers for no reason well they got nothing else to do I'm, i bet you they're trying to talk to the high schoolers just like yo what's up <laughs> i don't know hey yo come over here help me out yeah yeah i don't know i don't think i would talk to high schoolers if i was in prison well i wouldn't really want to yeah i don't know all right guys well there you have it if you want your question Asked on the show, get creative and DM us at Pim's Podcast on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. If you want to even submit your question uh, via Apple Podcasts, that would be great. You could raise five stars, leave a review, leave your question, we'll answer it on the show. Yeah, we're trying to get to 500 reviews, so go over there, just drop one. It takes like five seconds. Um, Kyle, if they want to get Pim's merch, if mm. they want to get a black hoodie yeah. that I don't have anymore because I lost four of them, where can they get those? Pims.store. We got black hoodies. We got gray hoodies. We got shirts. We got hats. Great stuff on there. Yep. Um, yeah, you guys can follow me at Hey Narwhal on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and YouTube uh, for a bunch of movie reviews. And uh, yeah, where can they follow you? At Kyle Stafford 36. Follow the podcast at Pims Podcast, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. 
All right, guys. Kyle and I are going to go on a little vacation. Our first real ew, break ew. for a couple days. Although um, we're already back. Yeah, we're already so back. We had a good time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we'll talk about it next episode. But anyways, we love no, we you. Won't. Oh, yeah, we will. Okay, bye. <laughs>